Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A local man in a truckload of trouble. He's facing charges in the theft of a truck and trailer loaded with more than $300,000 worth of collectibles. And as Katrina Weber reports, police say one small piece of evidence put them on the suspect's trail. It may not be where he was heading, but jail is where 32-year-old Jose Lozano ended up after allegedly stealing a truck and trailer. He was arrested yesterday after a nearly two-month-long investigation. An arrest affidavit says San Antonio police believe he's the man caught on camera at this motel near Loop 410 in jones Maltzberger in December, stealing the truck and trailer loaded with more than $300,000 worth of military collectibles. They were the prized possessions of Terry Kirkbridge, who had stopped here during a move to Florida. He yeah. spoke to us at the time. Super devastation. Uh, never felt anything quite like this. I've suffered lots of loss in my life, but this is just a different kind of feeling. I feel extremely violated. According to the affidavit, it wasn't long before police got a lead on the south side of town. The affidavit says police ended up tracking down the trailer the same day it was stolen. And from it, they got one small piece of evidence that ended up being a big clue in the case fingerprints, which they traced back to Lozano. Investigators later went to Lozano's house to talk to him. Instead, they say they spotted some of the stolen items in his backyard, then found even more inside. They got an arrest warrant last week and took him to jail yesterday. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A driver taken away in handcuffs at the scene of a crash. Police are now investigating whether that person was under the influence. The crash happened on I-10 near North Foster Road just after 2 this morning. Police say a driver rear-ended another vehicle on the main lanes of I-10. They sent that vehicle off the highway through a fence near a landfill. Officers tell us that driver was taken to a nearby hospital with minor injuries and is expected to recover. Meantime, police detained the other driver who caused the crash on suspicion of DWI. Another early morning crash also being investigated. A person taken into custody after police say that he crashed into trees on the south side just after one this morning. It happened on I-37 near Southton Road. Officers tell us the driver claimed to be avoiding another vehicle before crashing into these trees. Police say the driver taken into custody under suspicion of DWI. No one was hurt. The Community Lab asymptomatic COVID-19 testing site at the AT&T Center now closed. However, starting today, two new locations are open. Asymptomatic people will now be able to get free self-administered PCR tests at the Bar Shop Jewish Community Center and at Rackspace Technology. Now, no appointments are or insurance are required. The Bar Shop Jewish Community Center is in the 12,500 block of Northwest Military Highway. Rackspace Technology Headquarters located at one fanatical place near I-35 and Walsham. Community Labs also runs two other COVID-19 public testing sites for asymptomatic people in San Antonio. If you'd like some more information on these testing sites as well as a list of testing sites for symptomatic people, all you have to do is go to our website, ksat.com. Today, WellMed giving people their second doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. This is happening at two community vaccination clinics. It's operating in a partnership with the city of San Antonio. Patients who received their first shot at one of the WellMed run clinics are getting reminder notifications about returning for their second shot. The Moderna vaccine is designed to be given in two doses administered 28 days apart. WellMed is expecting to get about 5,850 more doses of the vaccine this week. Those will be for people who need their first shots. Metro Health and University Health will also expect to get more vaccine this week. Meantime, 739 more people have now been diagnosed with COVID-19. The seven-day moving average, 1,228. During last night's briefing, Metro Health also reported 1,451 backlogged cases. They're from December 10th to January 18th. Health officials also reporting three more people have died after contracting the virus. 150 backlogged deaths were also added to our overall total. The death toll now sitting at 2,361 for our area. And right now, 944 people are hospitalized with 354 patients in the ICU and 200 people on ventilators. It has been one year exactly since the city and county accepted the first COVID-related evacuee from China. 
starting a chain of events that could have long term implications on our economy and our personal lives. Last week, I sat down with the county judge and the mayor to get their thoughts on how the pandemic was handled, their takeaways. And while it was a worldwide crisis being managed by many governments and healthcare facilities, no one could have predicted how it would change everything from how we get married to graduate to even die. During the interview, some important revelations were revealed about how our city can operate in a unique emergency like this and how we're gonna go forward into our second year of a coronavirus pandemic. We have posted my entire interview with the mayor and the county judge. You can watch it right now on KSAT.com. And now to the battle against the coronavirus. Positive signs this afternoon in the quest to get it under control. The number of infections is dropping, but there are new concerns on the horizon. ABC's Aaron Katursky explains why. By the end of today, it's likely 10% of Americans will have had at least one dose of vaccine. So even though there's a clear, clear discrepancy between this, the demand and the supply, that will get better. Pfizer said it's speeding up production, and Johnson & Johnson is making stores of its single-dose vaccine while awaiting emergency use authorization. ABC News had a look at part of the process. We grow the cells in there. We then infect the cells with the viral vector that will ultimately be propagated in this tank and then subsequently purified to make the vaccine. There are new questions about the AstraZeneca vaccine. The World Health Organization is deciding whether it should be given to older people and whether it works effectively against the virus variant that first appeared in South Africa, where immunizations are now on hold. In this country, technology problems keep millions from making an appointment. I thought there must be a better way. This Massachusetts software developer built a website to help seniors Years that now averages 400 hits per minute. It's incredible. <laughs> I almost cry every time I get one of those emails. The injections are racing to stay ahead of the virus and its mutations. The variant first discovered in Britain is rapidly spreading across the U.S., possibly doubling every 10 days. It could be dominant in this country by March. We can't afford to have the disease spread now. With these mutations and these variants, every time we allow it to infect more people, it gives the virus the opportunity to mutate. There are concerns these Super Bowl partiers in Tampa, many not wearing masks, may contribute to the spread. And now that football season is over, the stadiums are going to be turned into mass vaccination sites to help speed up immunizations. President Biden and Vice President Harris will have a virtual look at State Farm Stadium today to see how they're going to pull it off in Glendale, Arizona. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. Some good rain chances in the forecast, especially as we get towards midweek. We'll talk about those chances and the potential for some colder air coming up. And Tom Brady, truly the GOAT now after the Bucks win the Super Bowl. We've got highlights coming up. A heart healthy supplement may not be providing the benefits you think it is. We have details after the break. Two common breast cancer chemotherapies can damage the heart, but could a common cholesterol lowering medication prevent that damage? With more on that, here's Max Massey. Receiving the diagnosis of breast cancer is daunting enough, then pile on doctor's appointments, the chemotherapy and radiation, and the side effects from treatment. One of the rare side effects is heart damage, but a new study suggests that heart damage might be prevented with a statin, a commonly used cholesterol-lowering medication. Researchers at the University of Toronto studied women who had breast cancer, some of whom were already taking a statin. These women were then started on the chemotherapies doxorubicin or trastuzumab. They found that women taking statins were less likely to be treated in the hospital for heart failures than those who were not in statins. However, this study does not suggest that all women with breast cancer should be taking a statin. If you have breast cancer, consider having a conversation with your doctor about starting statin to discuss the risks and the benefits. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. February is American Heart Month. One common heart healthy practice is taking fish oil. But a new council clinical trial finds prescription strength fish oil may not help your heart. Researchers looked at data from more than 13,000 people around the world being treated with a statin, which lowers cholesterol levels in the body. That means they're also at higher risk of suffering a major cardiac event like a heart attack or stroke. Participants were given either a high dose prescription fish oil or a corn oil placebo. Ultimately, researchers found no significant reduction in heart attack, stroke, or death for the people taking the high-dose fish oil. 
Those in the fish oil group were also 69% more likely to develop an irregular heartbeat. Dr. Steve Nissen, a cardiologist at Cleveland Clinic, led the research. He says the medical community will need to take another look at how fish oil is prescribed. I'm actually concerned that fish oil is used very widely without very good evidence of benefit. And I think we're going to have to come to terms with that problem. And remember, it's important to talk to your doctor before starting or stopping any medication, including over-the-counter supplements. Looking outside with live cam. Kind of cloudy out there, a little bit. Sun's trying to pop out, but uh, there is quite a bit of cloud cover, so you're right. Temperatures still are gonna be warm today. We're gonna have a couple of warm days where temperatures get into the upper 70s probably. Today, probably mid 70s. The aquifer is down half a foot, 663.6. We could use some rain. There is some in the forecast. As we look at the pollen count, mountain cedar is still moderate. It's dropping though, molds and ash are low. We'll talk about the rain chances. Also the potential for some colder air. That forecast is coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. So Justin and the weather team have been talking about this cold air way up north and it keeps creeping down and creeping down. So I guess it's going to get here one day. Well, it's kind of a puzzle, though. How cold? When will it get here? Y'all have a lot to work on. We have. We've been pouring through these models and they really have been all over the map. I mean, quite literally. And we've been working here hard here in the Weather Center trying to kind of piece it together. And I think we have a general idea now of when we might expect some of this colder air maybe how cold it is, although there's still a lot of questions there too. So let's jump right into the forecast first. Let's start with the time lapse. And you can see we started off cloudy, somewhat foggy this morning, at least in a few spots. Clouds are starting to clear out a little bit, still mostly cloudy at the airport, 65 degrees, south southeasterly winds at seven. As you might imagine, that's drawing in quite a bit of moisture. Dew point has jumped up to 57. It's going to be humid next couple of days. You look at the satellite picture here, and you can see where some of those breaks are, but it's certainly not sunny by any stretch of the imagination. We'll see some sun today, I think peaks of sun, but we'll call it a mostly cloudy day. 65 degrees at the airport, 69 in Seguin, 67 in New Braunfels, 65 right now in Hondo. We'll zoom out some. We are getting plenty of sun out near Del Rio. Temperatures there have jumped up to 70. More sun around Kennedy, too. That's where we're seeing 70s on the map. But underneath the thicker cloud cover, 60s for the most part, 63 right now in Kerrville. Two point tracker shows we're going to see quite a bit of humidity next couple days. Then it drops off with a cold front, and dew points really do drop off as we get into the weekend. An indication, perhaps, of some colder air. And we'll again talk about that here in just a second. 74 degrees by this afternoon we again should see the clouds clear up at least a little bit and the forecast shows that now as we get into tomorrow morning clouds are going to build back in we start off cloudy foggy maybe a little bit of drizzle out there too and then clouds like today will erode some tomorrow promises to be a fairly warm day i think and then clouds build back in wednesday we start off with some drizzle maybe even a few light showers wednesday morning and we'll have a pretty decent chance of some rain late wednesday into early thursday as the frontal boundary sinks south, I think this is our best shot we've had in a while to see some rain, which is great news. We, we definitely need it. Right now we have about a 60% chance of rain on Thursday. There is a look at the satellite picture across the area. We just showed you that, but I want to take you up to Abilene and we can actually pick out where our front is right now. Moving through Eastland, there's just a little bit of a cloud line there where the front is uh, pushing east and southeast. And so it is now south of Abilene and uh, there is some cloud cover behind that and some much colder air. 47 degrees right now in Abilene. It's 27 in Amarillo, 37 in Wichita Falls. You go north, the numbers are just incredible. Negative 11 right now in International Falls. Negative three at this hour in Minneapolis. You factor in the wind, feels like negative 29 up there in northern Minnesota. And even the wind chill in Amarillo right now is 22. So this uh, air mass is definitely a cold one and it's gonna be a battle of the air masses next few days. The air mass tries to move south, doesn't have a whole lot of luck tomorrow, so we're still in the 70s. Again, on Wednesday tries, we're probably still in the 70s. I think by Thursday it'll have just enough push to get down into our area. Temperatures would drop off significantly, potentially into the 40s. Probably stays that way Friday too. And then another push of even colder air, potentially by the weekend. 
Now, there still are some questions here, and uh, there could be some precipitation involved in all this. So it's got to be something we watch very closely. But here's how we think the seven day plays out as of right now. 78 degrees Tuesday, 76 on Wednesday, 30% chance of rain, 60% chance on, on Thursday. It would be one of those upside down days where we start off warmer, end up cooler, 47 by the afternoon. And 40s on Thursday, maybe some showers on Saturday. And uh, it does look like it could be uh, pretty chilly over the weekend right now. This is, again, it's still in flux a little bit. So keep with us. We'll keep you updated. Uh, but some colder air by the end of the week, potentially. Guys. Amazing change. Yes. Thank you. Coming up in Sports Star Brady setting all kinds of records. We've got his Super Bowl victory number seven. And the Spurs are coming off a road win over the Rockets. Now it's Golden State two nights in a row. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl champs. What's even more exciting, they are the first team in NFL history to host their own Super Bowl victory party since the game was played in their home stadium. Let's take you to the first quarter. Tom Brady has the Bucks moving, but then he's going to get stuffed, sacked by Frank Clark. Chiefs now moving the ball this time. Patrick Mahomes has to scramble, but you know he's really good at this. He's got precision on the run, fires one, but it no good. Darrell Williams can't hold on to it. It's off his face mask. Talk about looking at a score right in the face. <laughs> Chiefs settle for three. It's 3 nothing. End of the first. Bucks finally get a first down. And Brady to Rob Gronkowski. Eight-yard touchdown. First touchdown of the opening quarter for Tom Brady in a Super Bowl, believe it or not. Also the most touchdown connections for two players in postseason history. It's 7-3 Bucks after one. Taking the second quarter. Brady going to find Mike Evans across the middle. Bullet pass right there, and there goes Mike. That's good for 31 yards, down to the Chiefs' six. Two plays later, third and goal from the two. Brady throws to offensive lineman Joe Egg, but Anthony Hitchens is there to break up the pass. Great D by the former Cowboy. Bucks go for it on fourth and goal, but the Chiefs stuff Ronald Jones. Tampa Bay challenged the call. It was upheld, no TD. Kansas City ball at the one, but they ended up having a punt. The rookie punter shanked it. Brady in great shape, hits Gronk again. This one's going to be a 17-yard touchdown. Tampa Bay leads 14-3. Then right before that play, the Bucks were lined up for a field goal. Remember, KC lined up offside. That kept that drive alive. That one hurt because instead of three, the Bucks got seven. Brady to Antonio Brown, one-yard touchdown. They lead at half 21 to six. All right, let's go to the third quarter. Chiefs need to get something going on offense, and they do. Mahomes hands it to running back. Clyde Edwards Lair and he finds the seam 26 yards before he's finally brought down but the drive stalls 34 yard line Harris Butker from 52 makes it 21 9 Tampa Bay didn't waste much time answering though Leonard Fournette caps a six play 74 yard drive with his 27 yard touchdown run if they got a hand on him you couldn't really see it the Bucks running away with it now. It's 28-9. Chiefs desperately need to answer. Ensuing drive. Mahomes under pressure again. Throws it off his back foot, and the pass is going to be deflected right into the arms of Antoine Winfield Jr. The first turnover of the night belongs to the Bucks. It leads to a 52-yard field goal from Ryan Suckup. Tampa is now up big, 31-9, headed into the fourth quarter. First time Mahomes has not scored in the first three quarters as a starter. All right, fourth quarter, KC going for it on fourth and nine from the Bucks 11 inside the red zone. They have to get all the way down to the two. Look at Mahomes. As he's falling down, he fires that thing on a rope, but it drops to the ground. Oh, man, you got to catch that. He was horizontal the field on that throw. Bucks ball on downs. Mahomes put it all out there. You have to remember he was without both starting tackles. That was a big key, and the Bucks defense was lights out last night. It's also the first game of Mahomes' NFL career that the Chiefs lost by more than one score and did not score a touchdown. Tampa Bay wins its second Super Bowl championship, 31 to 9, and that is number seven for Tom Brady. It was 21 to 29, 201 yards, and three scores. It's been an amazing year, amazing year. We got to a good start, 7-2, and two, and then had a little rough stretch where we kind of found our identity. And I'm um, just really proud of all the guys, proud of all the uh, coaches, the effort we put in. Um, we knew we were playing a great football team tonight, and we got the job done. So you want to get this far, you got to get the job done, and we did it. He just played outstanding the whole ball game. He protected the football. Uh, we had great protection, and we found a couple guys like Antonio and Gronk. Both their touchdowns were more improv plays and uh, just, just did a great job. Great line, great tight ends. Everybody just did a hell of a job. Team effort. They were the better team today. 
Um, they beat us uh, uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, the worst that I think I've been beaten in a long time. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of the guys now they fought till the very end of the game. I know both those guys will be back. Hey, the Spurs got their second win in a row Saturday night, their second of the season against the Houston Rockets. San Antonio got off to a solid start and kept it that way with the 111-106 road win. DeMar DeRozan had his second game in a row with 30 points. Actually, the third time he's done that in the last five games. Drew Eubanks also had a nice slam in this one, his best performance of the season. Eubanks scored 12 off the bench. There's that slam right there. His fourth game back since being out due to a positive COVID-19 test. It felt good after um, being away from the team for a while. And, you know, I got my feet wet the other night and, and we're, we were down LA and um, we wanted to continue on that win from the other night. So just come out, bring energy, play hard. And uh, most of the time, the good things will happen if you just play hard. All right. So look who's in town, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors for two in a row. They play tonight and then they play tomorrow night. And then they play the Atlanta Hawks on Friday. That begins their rodeo road trip on Friday. So they get a couple of days to rest and regroup before they go out on the road for like seven, I think, mm -hmm. on that rodeo road trip. Mm -hmm. so. Aren't you forgetting something? What am I for? Oh. Shh, don't say it. Tom Brady. <laughs> Love Tom, you, man. Tom Brady earned you a Coke. Good job. New today at five. Do you have a smart speaker in your home? If so, chances are you're not taking full advantage of it. Tips and tricks to unlock your speaker's full potential today at five after entertainment tonight. Check that. Make sure it's just a dollar. That's it. Was it. Okay. It was. Former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial set to begin tomorrow. Democrats are hoping to make the case using videos from the deadly Capitol riots, as well as Trump's own statements that led up to it. However, legal teams are saying that he won't even be there to defend himself. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. The clock is ticking down to the start of Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. 56% of Americans saying in a new ABC News Ipsos poll that the Senate should find the former president guilty of inciting the deadly insurrection. But accomplishing that task during the trial, a tall order for Democrats. They'll need to convince at least 17 Senate Republicans to convict Trump, many already indicating they won't. If you believe he committed a crime, he can be prosecuted like any other citizen. Impeachment is a political process. Democrats planning to use Trump's own word prior to the January 6th insurrection against him. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. And countless videos, including those posted online by suspects in the riot, to make the case the former president is singularly responsible for the deadly siege that killed five people, including a Capitol Police officer. We won by sending a message to Pence, okay, that if they don't do as they are, as they, it is uh, their oath to do, if they don't uphold the Constitution, then we will remove them from office one way or another. Third ranking House Republican Liz Cheney, one of only 10 GOP representatives voting to impeach Trump, telling Fox News the former president's lies about election fraud contributed to the violence that day. We've never seen uh, that kind of an assault by a president of the United States on another branch of government, uh, and that can never happen again. The president was taking steps to make it worse, not better. But Trump's defense team is planning to argue the president's words at the rally are protected free speech, adding that a trial to impeach a president who has already left office is unconstitutional, a defense Republicans are rallying behind. Uh, zero chance of conviction. 45 Republicans have said it's not even a legitimate proceeding, so it's really over before it starts. And even if he's not convicted, Trump has already made history as the only president to be impeached twice while in office and the first to face a trial after leaving his post. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. The U.S. is once again engaging with the United Nations Human Rights Council. Secretary of State Tony Blinken announced the move after the UNHRC criticized the separation of children from parents at the U.S.-Mexico border and Israel's shooting of unarmed protesters. It's been more than two years since the U.S. took part in the council after withdrawing from it in June of 2018 during the Trump administration. The U.S. will engage with the Human Rights Council as an observer for now which gives American leaders the ability to speak in meetings, participate in negotiations, and partner with others to introduce resolutions. 
With vaccines in short supply on the short end around the world, South Africa is now considering giving the AstraZeneca vaccine that is still in the testing phase to healthcare workers. This comes after the rollout of another shot that preliminary data indicated is not effective, was suspended. The country was scrambling today to come up with a new vaccination strategy after it halted the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Among the possibilities being considered, mixing the AstraZeneca vaccine with another one and giving Johnson & Johnson's single dose vaccine, which has not yet been authorized for use anywhere. Like here in Texas, the Hispanic community in Chicago has been hit hard by the coronavirus. And according to new data, more Hispanics have been infected in that city than the number of whites and black residents combined. Some are now hoping Chicago's vaccine efforts will bring some relief. CNN's Omar Jimenez reports. ¿Crees que gentes en esta comunidad quieren acoger la vacuna? Sí. Silvia Trejo answers yes, but knows it's more complicated than that, even as her husband and son became sick with COVID-19 last summer. Era yo la que los cuidaba. And even after their battle with COVID, they weren't sure if getting the vaccine was the right move. She says there are a range of concerns about vaccines in her circle, including fears about having a chip inserted. Just one example of the false information that gets shared widely online. She lives in Chicago's Little Village neighborhood, where the vast majority of residents are Hispanic, once within the zip code hardest hit by COVID in the state of Illinois. All right. So we applaud? I think so. Dr. Marina Del Rios was the first person in Chicago to get a dose of the vaccine and fears some of the same factors that devastated the Hispanic community here will return as barriers. This vaccine distribution process is like playing the Hunger Games. So if you're not tied already to a medical home, which is a reality for a lot of Latinos who are undocumented or uninsured, then, you know, your chances of getting vaccinated um, anytime soon are, are slim to none. Since March 2020, the Latinx community, many of them essential workers, has had a higher number of confirmed cases than any other demographic tracked by the city of Chicago. And the total number of cases almost double that of white, non-Latinx people. CDC data shows nationwide Hispanic or Latino residents contracted COVID at nearly twice the rate of white, non-Hispanic people and were hospitalized at a rate more than four times higher, the biggest gap among any racial ethnic demographic. And then looking at vaccinations, of the data available, though Hispanic residents represent more than 18% of the U.S. population, the CDC reports just under 12% of those vaccinated in the first month were from that community. That's where people like Fajida Martinez come in, at least in Chicago. Mi trabajo es trabajar directamente con la comunidad. She's what's known as a promotora de salud, or a community health worker. Fresh off her first dose of the vaccine, she helps bridge the divide between the idea of a vaccine and its reality, mostly just being a guiding hand, she says. I would like, for example, the clinics or locations where they're giving the vaccine to have lots of hours in the morning, just like in the evening, to give people the opportunity, even Saturdays and Sundays when people don't have to leave their work day. I went educating myself in that. The reasons is important. I discussed it with my son and my husband. You know what? We're going to get it. Making the experiences of those who have gone before her even more significant. If it's safe enough for me and it's and it's something that I would recommend to my family, then hopefully that'll convince also more hearts and minds. I feel privileged, she says, really of being selected to get the vaccine because I can say I got the vaccine and I'm okay. Omar Jimenez, CNN, Chicago. The first week of February was one of the deadliest for avalanches in over 100 years. Four people were killed in Utah this weekend, 11 others losing their lives in separate incidents since February 1st. Nate Carlin says he and a group of his friends were snowboarding when it happened to them. Hours earlier, another avalanche 80 miles away claimed the lives of four people. They, they've done all they've done this kind of skiing and hiking for years now, and they've seen all types of avalanches. Yeah, a lot of veteran skiers have been heading to the back country this year because of COVID restrictions at local resorts. Experts say if you plan to make your trip yourself, carry an avalanche beacon, a whistle, and listen to the avalanche forecast. Whew, that's frightening.
I can't imagine turning around and looking and seeing the wall It's like a tidal wave, yeah. yeah. Live look outside, the sun out downtown. Well, actually, that's north of downtown, I believe. Uh, downtown itself still looks pretty murky. Yeah, well, you're kind of looking off at the distance here, but you're right. Uh, there are still some clouds there. I think we'll see some off and on cloudiness next few hours. Sun's trying to pop out in spots and temperatures are on their way up. Uh, right now, we're still in the 60s here in San Antonio. Let's take a look at the map across Texas. This is pretty interesting. We're at 65 degrees here in San Antonio, but you go 70 in San Angelo. And look at Midland. It's 72 there. You go just north into Lubbock and it's 44. Very strong front sitting right there, and uh, it's kind of stolen out at the moment, but that cold air is going to sit up there for a couple days before it eventually plunges south, and we'll feel a little bit of it here, it looks like. But in the meantime, we're still, de still dealing with warm and humid conditions. 67 degrees right now in New Braunfels, 63 Bernie State, 63 in Bandera, 66 in Hondo, and uh, rain chances this week. This is really, I think, the good news out of all of this. 60% uh, chance of rain on Thursday. It's looking pretty decent for some rainfall around the area. We will certainly take it. Forecast for today uh, will be up around 74 by uh, 4 o'clock. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Man's best friend is more human than we may have thought. They also love language. We're going to explain after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. All right, dog lovers, here we go. Much like humans, dogs also have certain types of love languages. You heard that right. According to Rover, some of the love languages include words of affirmation, like acknowledging your dog when you come home from work in a strong, affectionate voice. Physical touch, a lot of dogs simply love to cuddle or sit next to you on the couch, or gifts like treats and new toys. One of a thousand dog owners surveyed, Rover found out that physical touch was their dog's favorite love language. The least favorite was acts of service, such as giving him a bath or making him fetch the paper or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody the fetch the paper anymore? I don't, did they get it? Did they, well, maybe they get your slippers. I don't know. I don't like to do that. Fetch is not good, apparently. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that still happens. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe so. Uh, outside right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies. 65 degrees, our high temperatures so far. Average high is 66. So we'll be above average today. The low this morning was 50. Also above average. Records are 88 and 11. Set back in 2017 and 1895. But a busy seven-day forecast. We'll take another look at it coming up. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now this next deal will help you to create those flawless pictures every time and we are going to give it a try today. This home streaming studio by Aduro Ustream Lite is here to help you upgrade the quality of your photos and videos. Now right now we have the ring light focused on me and I'm going to turn this one on. There you go. It's as simple as that. Turns on via remote to help you make your Zoom meetings perfect and your selfies flawless. They have three lighting options. White warm yellow and warm white so you always have the perfect light 10 levels of brightness an adjustable tripod comes with it along with the remote control and a non-slip rubber rubber grip to securely hold your phone while streaming now don't worry about batteries it is USB powered the retail price $99 the case at deals price $49.99 that is a 50% discount you can find this deal and many more case at deals.com so this week, you didn't really need a heavy coat at the beginning of the week, but at the end of the week, you're going to better. Find I hope it, you haven't huh? put away your coat yet. No, don't it, do that. I, I was so tempted to do a kind of a spring cleaning, but mm, not I, yet. No. We got to get through February. We, we, you know, talked about the fact that we still can get strong cold fronts in February. It's looking that way. It's trending in that direction. As we've been following these computer models pretty quickly over the last couple of weeks, it's been kind of toying with us a little bit, but we think by the end of the week it will get a little bit colder. We'll start seeing some extremes across the country. We've already seen some of that. Take a look at the temperature extremes over the last 24 hours. Yesterday was 87 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This morning got down to negative 36 in International Falls, Minnesota, for a grand total of 123 degree temperature difference across our country from the low to the high. 
pretty impressive. We're going to see some big numbers like that next couple days because of that air mass that is working in from Canada as we speak. Outside right now, mostly cloudy skies, 65 degrees at the airport. South Southeast Julie winds at about 7 miles per hour. That's ushering quite a bit of moisture. 62 Canyon Lake, 67 in New Braunfels, 67 Comfort, uh, 66 right now in Hondo. And seeing some slightly cooler readings in the Hill Country where there's been some cloud cover this morning. And then you'll see warmer numbers down near Kennedy where uh, there has been more sun. 75, 74 Pleasanton, 73 down there in Catula. Dew points, as I mentioned, on the rise. We'll have some high dew points next few days. So it'll feel a little bit muggy out there, especially for February. Today, we think that temperatures will make it up to about 74 degrees with uh, some clearing this afternoon. Computer models hinting at that idea. And then the moisture comes right back in. So we're cloudy tomorrow morning, drizzle, some fog yet again. Be advised of that for your morning commute. And then as we get towards, say, 5 o'clock tomorrow, clouds clear again. And we're going to be looking at temperatures in the upper 70s potentially. Clouds move back in Wednesday. We start off with some showers, some drizzle. And I think we have a decent chance of some rain late Wednesday. And then as we get into the day Thursday, as a cold front works in, some of our best rain chances that we've had in a while. As it stands right now, 30% chance of showers Wednesday, 60% chance of some showers, and maybe even a couple of thunderstorms on Thursday. Another slight chance on Saturday as well. Visible satellite picture shows uh, the cloud cover that we have around the area right now. It's trying to kind of pare back a little bit out of the hill country. Uh, it'll take some time, though, before we get the clearing line here in San Antonio. So we'll keep things mostly cloudy. And then as you look north, a lot of cloud cover. And that's within that Arctic air mass that is to our north. 28 right now in Amarillo, 44 in Lubbock. You go on the other side of the front, 72 in Midland. So you can see the difference here. This is a cold, cold air mass. And as we look north, the numbers are still below zero in places like Minneapolis. International Falls, it's negative 11 after starting off at negative 36. Wind chill values right now, negative 29. Uh, pretty impressive, and even the wind chill in Amarillo right now is 21. So as we look forward in time here, it'll be a clash of these two air masses. Tomorrow the warm air winds. We're in the 70s. As we get into Wednesday, I think we're probably still in the 70s, but that cold air is trying to sink south, and by Thursday we may see temperatures dip into the 40s. That'll be the case Friday and into the weekend. Could be even a little bit colder as we get a secondary surge of some colder air. So that'll be something that we watch Saturday and Sunday. Here's how the seven day forecast looks for now. 78 degrees tomorrow, 76 Wednesday with a 30% chance of rain, 60% chance Thursday. Notice temperatures get quite a bit cooler and we'll be watching the weekend very closely too as we can get some pretty cold readings. Guys. Good cuddly weather for Valentine's. Potentially so, yes. All right, thanks yeah. Justin. We'll be right back.